I would like to leave nature in a better state than I inherited it for my kids and their kids and their kids after them. And I would like them to do the same too. Our wildlands, forest, ocean, hills and dales must remain untouched and unharmed, left alone to flourish and grow. Or should they? This would seem like the ideal plan, but when you consider that over the past 50 years and because of the industrialization of the planet, so much damage has been done, we now need big ideas and collaborative ways to regenerate our natural world. And that's where we come in. Nature and business can be the most powerful partnership. And not only that, the forest is the most fascinating place you could ever hope to be, with endless opportunities for adventures and entertainment. Most of the things that I like doing the best in my leisure time are being in nature. I grew up in nature. I grew up in the hills of Scotland. I spent most of my leisure time up in the hills, so leisure is tremendously important to me. Something else happened 50 years ago. In bid to encourage people to spend time in the forest, the Forestry Commission had an idea which was way ahead of its time. They converted spare workers' houses into accommodation for families who were keen to experience nature at her very best. I had an incredible childhood. I spent my childhood growing up in rural Ireland and I was surrounded by countryside. So we had endless fields to explore. There was a local woodland, we had a blanket bog. So myself and my brother and my cousins, we ran riot, you know, we ran free. And our imaginations really just uh, thrived in that environment. So all of those endless hours outdoors as a child, it built up this deep rooted affinity for the natural world. So to find myself now living and working in an environment such as this, it's a blessing. My daughter now has grown up in the forest too and it gives me great joy, I guess, to see her outside on a daily basis. Eventually, and rooted in the foundation so carefully laid by the Forestry Commission, Forest Holidays, as we know it today, was established. A unique organisation that harnesses the very best of our natural world, making it accessible to all whilst ensuring its longevity. My role essentially is to be an ambassador for the woodland. Some of those forest ranger activities might incorporate mini forest rangers, forest survival, guided walks, nocturnal adventures, even an archery session in the woodland, which I really enjoy. But as we know, the world and our wildlands are facing so many challenges and we've lost our connection with nature. The world has got increasingly more modern, more fast-paced, more digitalized, and obviously technology is brilliant. And if used in a balanced and productive manner, it's really, really important for society. It brings us a lot of benefits. I just worry sometimes that we've flitted too far in that direction, and perhaps we've lost the simple joy and wonder of being outdoor and being surrounded by all the natural delights that the environment provides. Ever since I was little, I've loved the outdoors and nature. One of my favourite things growing up was just to go on adventures with my brother. He'd always come back with woodland treasures, leaves and sticks. My favourite animal was a woodlouse growing up. Not everyone's favourite, but you could always find me with little animals crawling over my hands. And that was where my love of nature began. Studies have shown that when people spend time in nature, they're more likely to have positive environmental actions back at home. So that's why places like forest holidays are really important so that people can really connect with nature when they're here. My proudest moment was uh, being involved in the Pine Martin reintroduction to the forest of Dean and Wye Valley. The return of that mid-range predator helps to restore ecological balance to the woodlands. At present, forest cover across Britain is 13%. But back in World War I, it had dropped as low as 6%. It was the least wooded country in Europe. It was thought that if the war had have lasted for another year or so, the country would have run out of timber. So in 1919, the Forestry Commission was established. One of its direct remits was to boost forest production and forest cover across Britain. Partnerships with Forestry England, Forestry and Land Scotland and Natural Resources Wales are critical. And knowing that the UK has a wealth of natural capital, the power is in our hands. If we think about all the assets that we have, the hundreds of thousands of hectares of the UK that are covered in force, they provide so much benefit, so much benefit to the environment and to people. The way to unlock their potential, I think, is through partnerships. Part of the UK's forests are owned by the nation, they're owned by every one of us, and they're held in trust and looked after by each different country. 
but they need partners to help them. They don't get a huge amount of money from government. The more land entrusts to us, the more we manage it for biodiversity net gain, the more cabins we place in the sites and the more people therefore come in and experience the forest. However, sometimes we all tend to be resistant to change and don't always see it as a good thing. But with a legacy that dates back many decades and a mission-driven approach to the future, it's possible to do the right thing for both society and for nature. We're locals, but we feel like we're on holiday when we're here. We like being in the forest because we're at one with nature. It's beautiful, it's peaceful. You feel like you're in somebody else's holiday. It's so relaxing. Everybody's so pleasant and polite, and it's just a lovely environment. All of our cabins are built on stilts so that we don't harm the forest floor. Theoretically, they could be taken off and no one would know you'd ever been there. We have no boundary fences. They're open. Every single one is open to the public. If we didn't look after the land that has been entrusted to us to look after, our leases would be terminated. Our financial success is directly linked to how well we look after land and wildlife in the 245 odd hectares that are under our stewardship. We've used forest holidays ourselves in the past. So having one on the doorstep, we know they're not intrusive. They just blend in with nature. You can be in the forest and not even know this place exists. We encourage people, unlike a lot of operators, to get off our site and explore the local community and to put money into local community businesses. I'm very fortunate to be looking after the Scottish locations for Forest Three Days. Both locations are within the Loch Lomond and the Trothach National Park, renowned for its outstanding beauty, from seals to red squirrels, otters, pine martins, all sorts of deers and other animals. It's absolutely breathtaking. We are very engaged with the local community. We employ across the National Park around 70 team members who all live locally. We provide permanent employment throughout the year. We're not seasonal and that takes a lot of boxes for the National Park, knowing that our business is sustainable and perennial throughout the year. So benefiting the whole community. From the moment that we walked in, we felt relaxed. We just came outside and enjoyed the beautiful view and we had the most beautiful night's sleep. Spending time amongst the trees, it's good for us. It's good for our health and well-being. Studies have proven that it lowers anxiety and stress levels. It stabilizes your heart rhythm. How amazing is that? Being amongst the trees inspires creativity. It brings out the best in us. So you could say the trees are our allies, they're our friends, and I think just to celebrate and recognise that on a daily basis is the best thing we can do. I love the idea that here at Forest Holidays, people are coming to experience the forest maybe for the first time. These are the forests that are then their favourite forests that they keep coming back to and connecting with nature. I think that's why it's so important that we are here protecting it, enhancing it for generations to come. Humans are part of the landscape. We have been for thousands of years. We've shaped and moulded the land through our activities. We need to realise that we are part of nature. We are not separate or isolated from it. We are part of the landscape. As a family, there's nothing nicer than holidaying in nature. Our daughter absolutely loves the outdoors. Coming to Forest Holidays, we feel like we can really immerse ourselves in the experience of being outside. My daughter is really excited to enjoy the Mini Ranger experiences here. And of course, we're looking forward to going on a bike ride to really get ourselves immersed in the forest itself. 50 years ago, we set out to create a partnership between business and nature. And little did we know how important this would be. I think we all have a huge responsibility to protect it and enhance it. Look after it, actually, and pass it down to future generations, ideally in a better state than we inherited it.